What's up guys, this episode we're gonna be setting up AWS Cloud9 as a editor and environment for our Ruby on Rails development. So Cloud9 is a browser-based editor. It actually installs on your server and then allows you to use that remote server as your development environment. So you'll install Rails there and Postgres and your other dependencies and it actually runs a browser-based editor that you can use in your browser on your phone, your iPad, your laptop, whatever it might be, someone else's computer, and still develop your code exactly the same way. So what you need to do is create an AWS account to get started, and then we're gonna create a Cloud9 environment. You need to give this a name, we'll call ours GoRails. We are going to use an EC2 instance for this, and we're gonna use the T2 Micro, which is a free tier eligible version. And then we wanna make sure we switch this to the Ubuntu server 18.04 LTS, or any other Ubuntu server version that they offer. That's going to allow us to use the same development environment as we will in production, and our dependencies and things will be the same, which will be very handy for debugging problems in production. So then you can leave the rest of this alone. It should select a VPC for you by default and allow you to um, just set up the rest of this without having to tweak many of your AWS settings. This is gonna go ahead and take a second to get created. And once this is set up, you can go ahead and start setting up your environment. So let's open up a terminal here. And I wanna point out that this is going to be logged in as the Ubuntu user that's standard on the AWS images um, for operating systems. And we can run sudo commands without a password. And so we have full root access to this server. So we need to go and set up a few things, but this is already set up RVM for us. And it's set up Ruby 263 for us as well. So this is running a recent-ish version of Ruby, recent enough, and we just need to run RVM install 2.7.0 in order to get the latest version of Ruby. And once that's installed, we can go ahead and set up some of our dependencies. So our dependencies are gonna be pretty straightforward. We need Postgres, we need Redis, and we're gonna need Yarn to set up our Webpack stuff. So let's go ahead and copy the instructions for Ubuntu for Yarn. We'll go paste those in. And that's gonna set up the repository so that we can access those packages for Yarn. And we can run sudo apt update to uh, get a list of all the latest packages that are available for our server. Then we can run sudo apt install postgres ql and libpq-dev for our postgres headers so we can compile the gem. We'll also run redis server and Redis tools to install, and we'll have Yarn as well. So we'll go ahead and run that to install those dependencies, and we will get Node and all of those things along with this. Once our packages are installed, we can go ahead and add an SSH key to our environment here, and we have two options for that. We can take our local laptop's SSH key and upload it to the server if we want, or we can create a new SSH key just for our Cloud9 environment, and that's what I would recommend doing. So you can take a look at this link for GitHub to generate a new SSH key, and then you can have an SSH key that's unique to your Cloud9 environment, and when you're done generating your SSH key, you can take the public key and add it to your GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, wherever your Git hosting is, so that it knows that your EC2 instance for Cloud9 can clone your code successfully. And then once you have your SSH key set up, you can run SSH and a capital T git at github.com in order to test your SSH key and make sure that it works. So it'll print out your username and say, hey, you authenticated as um, your user and everything is good. If it's not, you're gonna need to make sure you follow those steps to generate an SSH key or make sure that you added your SSH key successfully to the server. Um, so once that's done, you can git clone any repository that you might want on your um, account. So we're gonna do a app that I have just to use as an example for Jumpstart Pro. So we're going to clone that down to the server and we can CD into the directory for that. And RVM is gonna let you know that it needs to install the version that your repository is set to. And so we're gonna go and um, install that version for Ruby. 
Then I wanna run gem install bundler once that's done to make sure that we have the very latest version of bundler so that we can have that install all of our dependencies. So then we can run bundle to install our dependencies for the app we just cloned or you can gem install Rails and have it create a brand new Rails app if you're creating a new Rails app in your Cloud9 environment. Now once that's installed, we can run Yarn to install our node modules for our application and we can run a Rails server. Now this is going to use a different port than 3000, which is the default, because Cloud9 has a separate setup for ports and it will set the port environment variable for us that Rails will automatically pick up and mount our app on port 8080. So then we can click on preview, run preview running application, and Rails is going to say, hey, it's trying to access us on this host instead of 127.0.0.1. Um, we want to go ahead and uh, basically allow that host. So we can even try and type in 127.0.0.1, and it's going to basically not open for us. And what we want to do then is go back and set that up. So let's go ahead and close this and open up our editor and go into config environments development.rb and we're going to paste that line of code that our error gave us. This is our host for our Cloud9 um, and that's the DNS name for it. So we can go back and run our Rails server now that we added that. And then once that's mounted and running, we can go and open this up in our preview. Now we have a Postgres setup that we need to change. So let's go ahead and shut down our Rails server and let's go run sudo su Postgres. And this is gonna make us the Postgres user on Ubuntu. And then we can say create user dash dash interactive to create a user for our Postgres database for our app to access. So I'm gonna name our user here Ubuntu. We're gonna make them a super user so they can create databases and do everything. And then once we're done, we can type exit and we can open up our config database.yaml and go through and set our username and password if you set one. Um, those steps you just need to make sure that you set up for your development environment. So this username here, you'll probably need to change to Ubuntu. We didn't set a password, so we can leave that around alone. Um, and we can close this and run our Rails server. Now, it's going to use the user that you have in your terminal as the default to try to connect to Postgres. So you don't have to change that to the Ubuntu user, but you can if you want. So now we get a fatal database does not exist. And we can open up another terminal just so we have this here. So we'll go into a repository and we'll run Rails DB create and DB migrate. So now we know we can connect to our database that we have and we um, can go create it and migrate it. So now that that has run, we can try one more time and refresh our application. And we should see that it is now running, but this has got to compile our Webpack code for a second before it can get started. So this will take just a second before we can see our app. Now, if you happen to get this error that it refused to connect, uh, just click this button here to open up the URL in an external tab and it will work just fine. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but it sometimes will uh, do that for you. And if you open it up in a new browser tab, it works like you would expect. So this is all good and we can now set up our Webpack dev server in order to have this um, hot reloading just like we would locally. So the thing that we need to do here is we need to change the dev server configuration in our webpacker.yaml file. And we need to use the URL um, in our public right here. So we'll paste this in and we need to specify the port of 8082. There are three special ports for Cloud9 that you can use, 8080, 8081, and 8082. And those ports you can bind your services to and they will be forwarded to them correctly on your um, EC2 instance. So now we can go ahead and run bin webpack dev server as we normally would. And I'm gonna shut down our Rails app and restart it so that it can pick up this change and use the webpack dev server. And we will go ahead and run that. And 
Once that is booted up, we can refresh our browser here and make sure that everything's still working, that our assets are available. And once this is ready, we can do that. Everything is good. And if we go into, say, app, JavaScript, application JS, and delete a line, like our style sheets from Tailwind, we should see that the other browser tab gets triggered with a refresh. All of our style sheets are gone because we just removed them. And if we save that again, it will recompile them. And this should refresh automatically right up here. And there it goes. So our Webpack Dev server is working correctly. It's triggering changes over the WebSocket whenever it sees a file change on our system. So this is all working now as you would have it in a local environment. There are a few gotchas like the ports, like 8080. You might have to specify those manually in Foreman. So if you have a proc file like we do in this application, procfile.dev, you might just need to say the port is 8080 in order to have that set up correctly. Foreman will specify a port itself and you wanna kind of ignore that one and use the one that's set up um, for Cloud9. So that's a small change you might have to make to use that, but that will make sure that you can run Foreman and um, have your Foreman proc file set up correctly to work with Cloud9. So that's really all there is to it. Cloud9 is not really much different than using your own environment with Ubuntu to run, but there are those port forwarding things that you have to be aware of so that you can make sure your Rails apps and Webpacker and other apps are mounted to the correct ports, so they're forwarded automatically. And as of course, you probably noticed all of this is running over SSL, so your traffic to and from your server is encrypted, so no one else can peek on what you're working on. So that is it. Um, Cloud9 is really handy to have. It's really nice to be able to use this on the go. If you're working on a laptop or an iPad that isn't yours or something, this is really great because you don't even have to log in to your own servers or anything. Uh, you just have access to it through your AWS account. So that's it for this episode, and I will talk to you guys later.